Hey, you got a small job boat and you need to repack your wheel bearings? Well, first thing you need to do is loosen up your lug nuts, usually a 13 16 break them loose, break both sides loose, jack it up, put on some jack stands, and then remove your lug nuts and remove your tire. Tire's off, now you need to remove the dust cap. What I do is I use a, uh, <coughs> a gasket scraper. I use my baddest one I got. So I do is I put it up here, right in there, tap it with a small hammer, and then I get separated, and then I'll do that. Okay, I got it separated. And then I'll take my scraper and I'll go like this, get it in there as I'm hitting it, I'll angle it, and it pushes it all the way off. Okay, I got my cap off. Now you need to figure out what kind of nut you got and set up. It's got a cotter pin in there, so that's good. So you need some side cuts. These are kind of side cuts, wire cutters. Clean out the excess grease and remove that cotter pin. Cotter pin's out. Save it so you can match it up to get your replacement because you never reuse cotter pins. Next. Get some uh, channel locks and loosen up your nut. Okay, I got my nut loose and I got it off. Sometimes they use a washer, sometimes they don't. So keep an eye on that. And then you just grab hold of it and you pull it straight off. If you got electric brakes and you, you got this far so far and it doesn't want to come off because you got electric brakes, it's a drum. You might have to back off your self-adjuster that's in the back of the backing plate. Otherwise, if you pull on it comes right off, then, then you're good. All right, so next you need to do is save that bearing. Do not drop it. And you'll have to put this in the vise and then remove that seal. Okay, you got the hub in the vise. Now you need to take a decent sized pry bar or whatever you have. Get inside there and lift it up. Okay. Take the seal out. What you want to do is you want to set it aside because you want to keep it. And take out the bearing. <clears throat> All right, now what you do is you look at the bearing. And you want to look on for little pits or flat spots, chatter marks. So far, so good on that one. Then you want to look at the outer one. Look at it, see if you see any flat spots or chatter marks or pits in it. So far, so good. Next, you want to come look at your race. And you want to look at your race. So you're going to have to wipe it off. And the rag. Okay, hold on. Okay, now, see the race? Kinda looks like it's got a pattern in it, doesn't it? So, that's cause it's been sitting for a long time and it makes those marks in it. I recommend replacing it. The race and the bang. I'm gonna look at the outer one and we'll see how that is compared to this one. See any chatter marks in that one? Any race uh, pattern or anything? Any pits? Five wheel bolts are M12s. Mark the bottom, bottom of it, this is the bottom. You'll mark the bottom so you can put it back up there directly the same. You'll have to pry the flywheel off of there from right to left. And oil leaking out of the back. Looks like the oil is coming from the back of it. Got a 
little bit up there on top. But mainly around here. All right, so due to rear main, we gotta remove all these uh, Torx bolts. The Torx bolts were T30s, remove them. Pry this cover off, it's held on with silicone. And the rear, the rear main seal will be probably stuck to the back of the crank, just like this one was. Man, what a, what a professional seal here, huh? Wow. All right, seal's out. Let it drain for a while. And, uh, Gee, we might even have to drain the oil because it might be it might be high. That might be why it keeps on dripping out. So anyway, you need to clean that surface up and get it all cleaned up and wipe off around the crank. Make sure there's no big uh, ridge line or anything or varnished deposits. You have fine sandpaper, emery cloth, go all around, clean it up, put some grease around your crank. Put some silicone on there and put your new seal and plate on there. But we might have to drain some oil out. When you're removing this lower control arm assembly, you get the trans out. There's this bracket right here for wear and it's plastic. It's got a 10 millimeter going in the top going straight down into that bracket for the control arm. All right, after you clean this surface up, and you put some memory cloth on the side of your crankshaft a little bit, clean it up a little bit. Clean it all up with some brake clean. Don't be spraying it in there. Wipe it on there and then wipe the crank and then put a little fine, a little bit of grease around the crank on the seal surface. And be careful not to get any grease around on the block. So now put some silicone inside your little grooves on your oil seal housing. And don't cake it on too thick because you don't want to be pushing it towards the seal. So just put it inside that groove, nice quarter inch bead all the way around. And then get it up here and line it up with your tool that's on the seal. And then eyeball these two holes through here and just you can have two hands, one here and one there, and just push it on in one style of motion. Boom. Okay, and then get a couple bolts started. Get them all started, snug them up. And then you want to torque them to 10 foot pounds. Okay, and then you want to let that dry. You know, I mean, it'll probably be dry and cured before you put the trans in, but it should cure at least 24 hours. Okay, now that you got it torqued, it's all set. And that's it for your rear main seal. You might want to just put just a little bit of wheel bearing grease on this pilot bearing. Just a little bit, okay? Okay, <clears throat> put that Cover back on now, if you took it off, I'm sure you did. Make sure you tuck it underneath here first and then put your, put them in your uh, dowels, okay? Make sure they're both in and not twisted or anything. So now you can put your flywheel on. Okay, flywheel up there. Put a little bit of uh, Loctite on your threads and your bolts. Get them all started, snug them up, and then you want to tor torque them to 65 foot-pounds. And that's it. Now you're ready to put the trans up there. Okay, so that's where we're at now. Get yourself a decent punch. Put a nice, clean, crisp edge on it. You want to feel the race, you'll feel an edge on it. You can feel that one right here. There's an edge. If you go on the other one, you'll feel it there. So you want to put that punch right on that edge of that race and give it a smack this direction and then a smack that direction, okay? Just keep doing that back and forth till it fully comes out, all right? Once you get the race out, you want to clean it off. Same thing at the bearing, you want to look for the number. You'll see the number. L44 510 or 610, it looks like a six. And then you got over here is an 
L44, 649, something like that. So when you go get your new bearings, you wanna match them up to the new ones and do the same thing with your seal. Your seal should have a number on it, but these are all rusted. So you match them up on the outside and on the seal lip, inner part to the new ones. So you wanna match up the new ones to another one. You do the outside diameter and inside diameter and the thickness. Okay, <clears throat> got your new bearings and new races. This is how you install your races. You got a race installer. Put it in there. Line it up. And hit it in with the hammer. So it bombs out. Okay, it's fully seated. I used my race installer and pound it all the way into it until it bombed out. If you don't have a race installer, then you gotta use a a big punch and make sure the end is nice nice and flat not rounded like that so you got to put it to the grinder and grind it down flat so you can go around to the surface on the corner edge of it and pound it in and make sure you push it in with the <clears throat> fat end in not the not the little end in if you do it the other way that'd be backwards proper Unproper. Proper, unproper. Okay? <clears throat> Once you get all your races in, then you need to grease your bearings. If you don't have a bearing packer, then you'll have to use your hands. Put a big glob of grease in your hand and just work it. Work it through the side. Going like that until you see it come out this edge. And as you see it coming out the edge, just keep turning it scooping it up and scraping it against the edge in the palm of your hand so it comes up through the bearing races. Just keep doing that. See, that's what you're doing. You're just scraping your palm of your hand and forcing the grease in there. And you work it all the way around in a complete circle. And when you get them all done, you can put them in side here. And then on the inner one, you can put your seal on. See how the grease is all the way around it? Then you want to smear a bunch of grease on your race and rub it around your outer part of your bearing and then you can place it inside there. Do that on the outsides too. Okay, <clears throat> here's your seal. Pack it full of grease. Line it up. You can use your uh, bearing race installer for a bigger race installer. Like a bigger one. You can just hit that, boom. Hit that down if you don't have one. Then you have to tap it around with your, your hammer lightly, evenly so it bottoms out. Hmm. Tap it on there so it's flush. And then you're good to go. Do the same thing with the other side. And also pack it full of grease. Because it's going to be in the water. Pack it full. And when you're going together, you'll put your bearing, outer bearing on there and push it onto the axle. Okay, <clears throat> wipe your spindles off and then get a handful of fresh grease and just rub it all over it. <clears throat> you wanna put it over here where the seal rides and then I'm by the lip of it right there. Get this side done and just go to the other side okay okay <clears throat> put your hub on push it all the way on turn it as you go and then once you got it on you can put your nut nut on or if you got a washer make sure you put the washer on and then you then your castle nut tighten it up with your fingers best as possible and turn it <clears throat> and it gets your channel locks go on here Get on there, tighten it up, and when it stops, give it a little bit of a umph. Not a lot of strength, you're just doing a little bit. Because you want to seat the bearing, and then turn it. All right, now 
Now back it off, okay? Back it off, turn it. Now just take it this way and just snug it up. All right, it's snugged up. Turn it, get your cotter pin and find your hole. If your hole is uh, close to the hole, you can turn it forward just a little bit. And I mean just a little bit. But otherwise, if it's not close to the hole, back it off to the hole, okay? My hole is right there on top. Right here is snugged up. So all I'm gonna have to do is back it up a little bit. Do not tighten it up to get to it that much. No way. So what you just wanna do is just back it up to it and put your cotter pin in there. Bend it over and cut the excess off. Okay, put the thickest cotter pin you can get in there. And then what you wanna do is pull on it down, bend it over, and then cut the excess off, okay? And then what you do is you wipe off the excess grease and you put it inside your cap, okay? See how this cap's dented in? Take the butt, the handle of your screw, your uh, hammer, stick it in there on a piece of wood and pound it down. So it looks like that, instead of like that, okay? And that will be it. I'm gonna do the other side and I'll show you on that one. Okay, I got this side started. I don't have it tightened up. Okay, it just bombed out. Just bombed out. Seat in the bearings, bomb out again. Then the bearing. Check to see if it's bombed out. It's bombed out, so now back it off. Spin it. Now do it this way and just snug it up. Now what you need to do is look and find out where the cotter pin hole is. And you always do that by backing off. Oh, there it is, right there. Oh, it's right there. Now I get my cotter pin in there and, and I'll be done. Yeah, like on this one, it's a little tight. So I have to, I had to bend the cotter pin a little bit to sort of curve into the nut. And I'm tapping it down. Now I'm gonna pry the rest of it down. Pull it down in there. Turn it. I get that in there. Okay, it's bombed out. Now I'll take my end, each end. Bring it up. Now I'll just cut the excess off. Same thing with this one. Cut the excess off. Okay. Now you get your cap. Tap it on with a rubber mallet. And if it goes on there loosely, then you just gotta bend those little, the end of the cap. Like I said, if the cap goes on loosely, you want to bend these out. Like smack them smack with a ball peen from the inside out to make them come out, okay? That way they'll fit on there more tighter. Okay, so use a rubber mallet and put them on there. And your nose are good, your wheel bearings are done. Put your caps on, snug them up, put your tires on, torque your tires to 90 foot pounds, depending upon your tire. Use either 90 to 100 on this type. So other than that, you're all set. And that's how you repack your wheel bearings. If I helped you out doing repacking your wheel bearings, maybe you can help me by subscribing to me. I appreciate it, thank you. And don't forget to wipe off the excess grease, okay? All right, have fun.